in New York. Uh, it's a global presentation, so I decided to use this format. Uh, most of you know who I am. Uh, thank you, some of my students are here, that's great. Uh, I know many familiar faces, thanks for coming, and I think you'll enjoy the content of uh, these three presentations. Uh, I do want to say I'm also uh, fortunate to be working with Rich for many years, uh, Director of Research at Pure Earth, and helping uh, sort of publish a lot of the work that this wonderful organization does. So let's go back to the map. Uh, I am going to jump around. Primarily, I'm going to jump through um, to Africa. And in Africa, the way I'm going to present the, um, the health effects aspect, instead of giving you a list of all the health effects of lead on and on that you've seen a million times over, I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to focus to a couple of countries and tell you what's going on. Specifically, here we have Zambia. And I just got back from Kabwe. Uh, it's my fourth trip, fifth trip there. And what you see here is this gray area, uh, which is um, a historic lead mining. This has been going on for, oh, Rich wrote about it in his book, uh, and he's been there. He's been singing uh, the, uh, the, the bad news. No, you, you don't sing bad news. But uh, talking about the disastrous uh, conditions in Kabwe since uh, 2003, when uh, he was uh, involved with it. And here we are 10 years later, and it's still horrible. It really is, in my judgment, probably the most polluted place on the planet and having the most serious uh, health impacts. So what you see here is a lead mine, a city of 200,000, people living right up near the lead mine. And the entire, the entire site is contaminated. We've taken so many measurements. But this black mountain you see is actually um, lead slag. And just as we see scavengers throughout New York collecting bottles, well, they are the scavengers of the planet. And we see them collecting all sorts of things. And what they're doing is essentially going here and uh, collecting this material and bringing it to a local refinery for recycling. So this is the exposure. Not to mention people are using the, um, the ore for ground cover, despite repeated efforts of the danger of doing that. We still see it uh, done in these, um, in these homes, and we have some uh, horrible numbers I'll share with you in a second. Yes, you are looking at a man walking downhill into this um, tunnel. I did not have the courage to do this, but uh, Larry Price went into that hole. Um, uh, but he's a consultant, so there's no worker comp issue there. So, he's, uh, <laughs> so uh, but I, I stayed outside the hole for a couple of reasons, taking soil samples and everybody's uh, wondering what we're doing. And of course, the area is populated with the next generation of scavengers, right? So this goes on and on, cycle after cycle, we see this going on. And of course, it's a dry climate, very dusty material flying around everywhere. So the entire city is contaminated. I'll, I'll give you some numbers in a second. We see, of course, the inevitable football pitch uh, all over town, bare feet, playing. This is what kids do. I actually have a nice picture of uh, the cleverness of using um, plastic bags. If you take like 500 of these and wrap them together, you have a nice football. So it's pretty clever, these kids. So here's a building. I won't tell you what it is just yet. I know the image is not great. It's the best I could do. And if you look more closely, you see the lead soil levels. Now, the EPA standard is 400, and I see my colleagues in the back, uh, uh, Lillian, uh, in shock with some of these numbers. 11,000 parts per million, 1,200, uh, 5,000. By the way, this is 11,000 is 1.1 percent of the soil contains lead. It's almost to the point where you could collect it and sell it to a recycler and make money. This is the topsoil. And some of these numbers, 10,000, 10,000, 13,000 ppm. Uh, just to give you a sense, there's a, there's a site in Brooklyn, a lead smelter site, in, um, uh, oh, I'm blanking out at the uh, Red, Red Hook, thank you very much. EPA's dealing with it. What are the levels there? 600, 700, 1,000. I almost chuckle. I said, you have no idea what this is. So what is this building? This building is the health district office. This is the new, old maternity. This is the new maternity wing. When we go here, and we go here a lot, there's usually dozens and dozens of people with families waiting for treatment, drugs, malaria, HIV testing, on and on and on. 
And uh, this is just an example of one site. Uh, this is always a shocker. Yes, you are looking at what children do best, and what they love to do is play with mud and make things. And of course, this is a soil that has 2,300 parts per million lead. So all you need, uh, where is he? All you need, Michael, is a, t Michael Weitzman knows about lead. Uh, just touching your mouth, uh, your fingers to your mouth, you're already at uh, levels of 1020. All right, so that's Zambia. But now let's, uh, we don't have proof of health effects. We need that. We don't have bodies. But we do have bodies in, uh, in this particular country. We are now in Senegal, uh, Chero um, Sumer, here we are. And what happened here is batteries. Now I'm not going to uh, tell you uh, more about batteries because we have someone online who will discuss that. But here was a process of breaking batteries and recycling the lead. And in this particular community, the levels were dissimilar. I know you can't read this, but you could probably figure out that red is bad. Green is okay, sort of. Yellow is in the middle. Uh, the levels, again, were sky high. Lower than Cobway. Lower than Cobway. And what's the point here? If you look at these numbers, these are blood lead in children under four, which is, this is really maternal exposure. This, a four-month-old doesn't pick up lead. Uh, 99, 131, 151, five micrograms, but you may have missed the header on this. The header is deceased. And this is 18 children confirmed uh, fatalities in 2010, and possibly ongoing, right? We really uh, sort of just hit the, uh, uh, hit the surface on this. It's hard to say it's just stopped at 18, right? Because this has been going on for years. Luckily, this site's been addressed. Um, however, it's a constant battle to get people to stop sort of uh, recycling these batteries in the lead. And this is the exposure. This is a little Seneg Senegalese uh, girl playing, again, barefoot in soil, filling up a bag, emptying it. This is uh, very, very common. OK, so now we're back in Africa. But nothing compares to what happened in Zamfara. Uh, several of you know this story. Uh, if you don't, it's a must in public health. This is an extremely difficult area, and you can read some of the bullet points here. Aside from, uh, it's also a dangerous area. This is where the abduction of the girls occurred uh, by Boko Haram. Uh, this is um, uh, an amazing story of MSF going in saying, we want to vaccinate your children. Bring us your children, right? This is what MSF does great. Uh, well, there were no children in town. They're gone. Because what do you mean they're gone? He goes, they died. And sure enough, uh, more and more people got involved. We got involved with a cleanup, uh, Pure Earth. I've not been to uh, Zamfara. It's a very difficult area because of uh, Sharia law. Men can't really be anywhere near women. So imagine doing a remediation in conditions like this. And we're not talking a few villages. We're talking a whole area that primarily was inadvertent exposure from gold mining uh, which they use mercury, which is another dirty talk one day maybe. Uh, and the soil had contaminated, uh, not contaminated, had naturally occurring lead sulfide. So in the, in the process of getting out the gold from the, uh, from the soil, they were exposed to lead. So they didn't really, they weren't even going after the lead. So horrible numbers, uh, we could zip through some of this. Some, some people are saying 400, some people are saying 800, some people are saying 200. Do we really know, right? This is, it's even hard in the U.S. to put a precise number on fatalities. But in this case, it's even more, more difficult. But 400 children, right? I mean, uh, I, I dare any of my environmental physicians, you know, do we know of a child in the U.S. who died of lead poisoning? And the answer is yes, because every now and then they'll swallow some lead uh, material and they'll get a serious poisoning. But it is really quite rare. And here we're talking fatalities, not cognitive damage. This is uh, amazing. So this is uh, just three countries. But everybody uses batteries. Ghana, Ivory Coast, Sudan, all these, uh, Ethiopia. So these are just some of the hot spots. Um, and of course, you know the damage. Uh, just to 
you know, Rich did a fine job of, of bringing to the attention of cardiovascular, right? We generally don't associate this with lead poisoning, but more and more, uh, it seems like the epidemiology is showing that it is a significant contributor. So when you add that to the array, uh, you get uh, very high DALYs, disability just uh, life years. And we have, of course, uh, other conditions. All of the speakers will mention health impacts to some extent. So that was uh, my little present introduction on lead, global lead poisoning. I want to just tell you that we have Chinanka in Indonesia. We have, uh, Drew will talk about Bihar in India. Ruben will, uh, I'll introduce him shortly on Mexico. We have uh, Peru. Uh, I've been to many countries. We really don't know much about China. They don't really talk to us too much and they don't want us there too much. But I, I suspect when you look at how many mopeds and vehicles and batteries are being used, you're getting significant uh, exposures there also. So uh, thank you for your time.